Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you about 11 o'clock. So uh, let's get going. Uh, chilly today, isn't it? Yeah, it might, 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 uh, take the, yeah, it might take me fruit off in a minute. But, uh, yes, it's a little bit nippy today. It's kind of a bit colder. Anyone got any nice news for us to, uh, to warm our hearts this morning yes. as we begin? Oh, Pauline's got some. Yes. Good to see you. Again. Are the marvelous. Colors are never realized as how dry and bright they are. It's almost oh. like being falling down. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, uh, I'm glad to, glad to hear that it we went well last week. It was really good. Um, and uh, anyone else? Sorry, did someone else say that? Oh, I, thought it was, I thought I heard someone else say that. Had some news as well. Uh, there we go. Um, it's uh, Lydia's birthday tomorrow. My, um, my not so little girl. She's uh, she's going to be seven tomorrow. So um, yeah, I don't know quite how she she gets so big, but um, you know, I'm so soon it will be you know she'll be going off to secondary school, university, you know, children of her own maybe. Who knows? What happens so quick? This is this is this is the thing that everyone says, it though, isn't it? You know, you think people say to you, "Oh, it goes quickly," and you think, "Oh, yeah, I, I know it goes quickly," and then. You know, it just seems like yesterday she was like a little, you know, baby in arms. But uh, let's start with uh, with a psalm, and um, uh, as as is my uh, my pattern, the psalm is just whichever one I happen to have read that day. Uh, but it seems to serve us quite well because you get <laughs> you get a variety. Uh, psalm 101, and I apologise if you um, we still haven't got the Bibles in the. Um, in the chairs, but I'll read it for us. Psalm 101. It's not a long psalm. I will sing of your love and justice. To you, Lord, I will sing praise. I will be careful to lead a blameless life. When will you come to me? I will conduct the affairs of my house with a blameless heart. I will not look with approval on anything that is vile. I hate what faithless people do. I will have no part in it. The perverse of heart shall be far from me. I will have nothing to do with what is evil. Whoever slanders their neighbour in secret, I will put to silence. Whoever has haughty eyes and the proud heart, I will not tolerate. My eyes will be on the faithful in the land, that they may dwell with me. The one whose way of life is blameless will minister to me. No one who practises deceit will dwell in my house. No one who speaks falsely will stand in my presence. Every morning I will put to silence all the wicked in the land. I will cut off every evildoer from the city of the Lord. I think it's a, a good reminder to us that uh, it's not just, you know, we shouldn't just have a concern about ourselves, um, but it is uh, not having part in evil that, that other people do as well. And of course, to an extent, you know, we're all going to have to have uh, living in a fallen world, we all have to have some sort of part in it. But, but there is a time, isn't it, where we have to, to distance ourselves and to say, you know, I will not have uh, have a part in this. And I think it's a good reminder to, to have an eye out um, uh, for, for what is going on and to, to ensure that we are doing what God wants us to do and to, to be seeking His ways and to be walking with others who, who also uh, seek His ways. Well, we're going to have a song as we begin, and it's number 1646, which is a lovely um, a modern song. You are my anchor. And uh, it's based on um, a psalm, or, or um, sort of putting together various different psalms. And um, it's You are my anchor. and. Uh, just asking the Lord to dwell with him, saying that he is our anchor, our refuge, all of these good things. And um, as always, um, I'd love to be able to just to say, just take off the mask, stand up, spell your heart out. But unfortunately, um, we're not quite in that situation as yet. Um, so, um, but uh, let's sing, make sure we sing it here. And that's, you know, that's where it's really, uh, really matters in our hearts. So, uh, 1646. Sorry, one six four six.
we can we can learn from this time. Know that we had the lessons from lockdown in our Thursday Thursday evening meetings. Is that yearning, you know, the desire, the longing to dwell in, in the Lord's house? Because I think when you know, when we can't do the things that we, we'd love to do, uh, and when those things are taken away from us, even if temporarily, I think it makes us think, well, what do we really want? And what, what are we asking God for? And I think it, it teaches us some patience, and it teaches us where we're, we're really longing for, isn't it, when we're going through uh, times like this. And I was really struck by that as we sang, that you know, what do we really want from God? It's to dwell in your house, O oh Lord, every day, and to rest in in the Father's embrace. That's what we really want. And uh, here on, on this earth, at the moment, uh, we're, uh, we've got a sort of reduced capacity, haven't we, to, to do the things that we want to do. But we will, we fix our eyes on the time when we will dwell in, in the Father's embrace forever, in the new creation with Him. Well, let's pray together. You take up your service sheets. We'll pray the prayer of preparation all together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, then, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. Lord God. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, Bless our Sovereign Lady, Queen Elizabeth, and all who are in authority under her, that they may order all things in wisdom and equity, righteousness and peace, to the honour and glory of your name, and the good of your Church and people. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to have our reading now from uh, Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 4. Is that she? Sheila. So um, she will come up and read that. So it should be on a printed sheet that you have there. Ecclesiastes 4. under the sun. I saw the tears of the oppressed, and they had no comforter. Power was on the side of their oppressors, and they had no comforter. And I declared that the dead who had already died are happier than the living who are still alive. But better than both is the one who has never been born, who has not seen the evil that is done under the sun. And I saw that all toil and all achievement spring from one person's envy of another. This too is meaningless, a chasing after the wind. Fools fold their hands and ruin themselves. Better one handful with tranquility than two handfuls with toil and chasing after the wind. Again, I saw something meaningless under the sun. There was a man, all alone. He had neither son nor brother. There was no end to his toil, yet his eyes were not content with his wealth. For whom am I toiling, he asked, and why am I depriving myself of enjoyment? This, too, is meaningless, a miserable business. Two are better than one, because they have a good return for their labour. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. 
that pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? No one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Advancement is meaningless. Better a poor but wise youth than an old but foolish king who no longer knows how to heed a warning. The youth may have come from prison to the kingship, or he may have been born into poverty within his kingdom. I saw that all who lived and walked under the sun followed the youth, the king's successor. There was no end to all the people who were before them, but those who came later were not pleased with the successor. This too is meaningless, a chasing after the wind. This is the word of God. Thanks, Thank Sheila. And we will um, do um, keep, uh, keep the passage, our second passage open with this on the sheet, isn't it? But uh, keep it there to hand because we will come back to that <coughs> in a moment's time. Um, but let's, uh, let's say our creed together. Perhaps we should stand. We can stand to say together our creed as we declare our belief in God. And so we say together, We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that he has seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory, to judge the living and the dead, and at his kingdom at my wedding. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped. Who has spoken through the Lord Jesus? We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism, the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please do be seated. And if you take up your, uh, your sheet there with Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 4. Well, if I ask you to complete the sentence, I'd be happy if, how would you answer, I would be happy if, or how do you think people just uh, generally in, in society would answer that, answer that sentence, I'd be happy if. Or what about putting it the other way around? X stops me from being happy. X stops me from being happy. What would be the thing? that stops you from being happy. And think about maybe how you would answer that, or, or how people uh, out there would answer that. Well, what we're going to be thinking about uh, this morning is how Ecclesiastes starts to uh, fill out an answer to that question. That's something we've, we've been thinking about over the past few weeks as we've been looking at Ecclesiastes. And, uh, and today, Ecclesiastes turns to examine our relationships and how we, how we relate person to person. So in verse, uh, verses 1 to 3, it talks about oppression, and it says how there was oppression that was taking place under the sun, and um, how was on the side of their oppressors they had no comforter. 
So there's an awful lot of um, bad relationships, if you like, just out there in, in the world, isn't there? There's a lot of oppression, and uh, sadly, it, it is a, a terrible thing. And Ecclesiastes says even that uh, the dead had already died happier than the living. But then he goes further and says, but better than both is the one who has never been born. So he's saying it's even better not to be born than to see all of the, the oppression that goes on in the world. And you think, is that really true? Is it, is it better not to, have been, not to have been born? And I think we have to remember just what we were thinking about last week, uh, chapter 3, verse 17. God will bring into judgment both the righteous and the wicked, and there will be a time for every activity. So, so the oppressors don't get away with it in the long run. The oppressors don't get away with it. But this is what the teacher is saying in Ecclesiastes, that there is a lot of it about. And if you don't have a long view of God's judgment and what's, you know, his justice, then actually it is what he says is true, isn't it? Now how can we deal with all of the oppression in the world? How can we deal with all that injustice? Unless we believe that a God of justice is, is going to make things right in the end. And that's the point that he's, uh, that he's making. But he then goes on to talk about other ways in which uh, human relationships break down, which are perhaps a bit more subtle. And in verse 4 he says, all of the, I saw all the toil and all achievements spring from one person's envy of another. So he's saying that at the end of the day, a lot of toil and achievement in the world actually comes from a, from a negative, from a bad place, which is being envious of another. And that's what drives a lot of people. It's not that they just want, want good things for themselves, but they want a bit more than someone else. And that's what, what drives people. You know it, that the whole, the saying, keeping up with the Joneses. You know, your next door neighbour gets a nicer car, so you have to get a nicer car. And your next door neighbour gets, a, I don't know, a new, a new lawnmower, and you have to get a new car. All of that sort of thing. That's how a lot of people work. That's how a lot of people uh, kind of function. This is what the teacher is saying. There's a poem by Victor Hugo. I don't know if you, you know any, uh, any works by, by Victor Hugo. There was a, was a famous book that he wrote, a uh, little pop quiz. Um, this, this escapes me the name of his, his most famous book. Anyway, he wrote a poem called Greed and Envy. And in that poem, Greed and Envy, they go walking together and they come across desire. And desire says to them, I can give you whatever you like, except that um, the other has to get a double portion of whatever you want. So whatever you ask for, the other gets double. And, uh, and envy said, make me blind in one eye. That's, um, and that is envy, isn't it? That's envy, as long as you've got more than, than the other. Um, that's, that's how a lot of people work. Now what, what the teacher is saying in Ecclesiastes, he's not saying, it shouldn't make us lazy. And it says in verse five, fools fold their hands and ruin themselves. So that's not a, this is not a, a, a call to be lazy. You know, it is good to work hard. It is good to, to earn a living. It is good to you know, do, do all of those kind of creative things. But, he says, verse 6, it's better one handful with trans tranquility than two handfuls with toil and chasing after the wind. So he says it's better to be at peace and not kind of always be chasing after more and just have that inner peace of just accepting the good things that we have as a gift rather than rather than always chasing after more stuff. G.K. Chesterton, um, he was the author from the 20th century, he's a Catholic, I think, but he often said a lot of wise things. And he said that there are, uh, there are two ways of getting what we want. The first one is to acquire more stuff, to get more things. And the second way is to desire less, and just to be content with what we have. And, and I thought that's a really wise thing, actually. It's very much in accord with what the teacher is, is saying in Ecclesiastes. And so, um, uh, and, and it's also uh, what the Bible says elsewhere, 
in uh, 1 Timothy, for, just for example, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10, the Bible has got a lot to say about money. And, um, and uh, yeah, 1 Timothy, sorry, 1 Timothy 6, verse 10 says, The love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people, eager for money, have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. So, uh, the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. And, uh, and that's something that the Bible often talks about. And, uh, and greed can often lead to loneliness. This is what he says in verses 7 to 8. There was a man all alone. He had neither son nor brother. There was no end to his toil, yet his eyes were not content with his wealth. So there was a man who had great wealth, and um, he was, you know, he was not content with it, and he was all alone. He had neither neither son nor brother, as it says. And unfortunately, we can probably think of people like that, can't we? Perhaps if not known to us in our own experience. People who you can think of who, if they go to a restaurant, could pay for the meals of everyone in the restaurant, but don't actually have anyone to share it with. And, uh, and this is, sadly, this is how, it, uh, how our society, again, often works. Not just our society, but in every society you get this. The greed is there, and people prefer uh, acquiring wealth and things to actually uh, prioritising relationships. And he says it's not just meaningless, um, the teacher actually adds it's a miserable business. So it's not just meaningless in the long term, it's miserable here, here and now. And the people who chase wealth and chase possessions in this life don't just make them, it's not just meaningless from eternity's perspective, it's actually miserable now. That's the, that's the point of it. And so he if, if, if finishes off this, this little section, verses 9 to 12. Uh, saying two are better than one. That's really a summary of what of, of his message. Two are better than one, and he gives some um, some practical reasons why. For example, they have a good return for their labour. You know, if you join forces with someone else, you can achieve more. Uh, if one of them falls down, someone else can help. Um, if, if they lie down together, they'll keep warm. Um, on a day like today, you kind of think, oh, I can see that actually. Um, and um, one may be overpowered, but two may defend themselves. So, so there are practical reasons why. But of course, the biggest reason is that human beings are, are intended for relationships. Now, think about what uh, God said to Adam in, in the garden. You know, it's not good. That's the first thing that he said it's not good. It's not good for man uh, to be alone. And uh, that's when he, he, he creates Eve. But maybe the point of all of this is that we as, as human beings are designed to give and to receive love, not to store up possessions for ourselves. And I think I'd like to just ask the question of us, really, are we, are we investing in the right things? Are we investing in our, as much in our relationships as we do in, in stuff, in things? Now I think this is something, I think there is a bit of a gender gap here because I think women are probably better at this than men. I was reading an article about this um, a little while ago which said that um, just encouraging men to, to work on their friendships um, because it said when most men when they get married, um, if they do get married, will end up forgetting their friends. And um, I know that um, my dad uh, when my mum died a few years ago, he's got back with some of his friends that he knew years ago, and I think it's been really good for him. Um, but it is, it's important, isn't it, for us to, to, to work on the relationships that God's given us, because at the end of the day, that's far more important than, than the things that we have, than the money that we have, the, the, the positions that we have. And it's not about being married or single, it's not about that, it's about, and about the church, about the people here about the friends that we have, about our neighbours, about our, you know, our wider families. And all of those relationships are, are important and God wants us to, to prioritise those and to, and to get that in the right perspective. You know, he doesn't want us to be alone uh, and he doesn't want other people to be alone. 
And um, it, it, it puts money in perspective as well, doesn't it? It puts money in perspective that you know, the best way to be to be happy with money is actually to give it away, and you know, to have it, to have what we need, but actually to uh, to give it away. This is, um, for example, what it says in Acts, Acts chapter twenty, verse thirty-five. Uh, in everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work we must help the weak. Remembering the words the Lord Jesus Himself said, "It is more blessed to give than to receive." And according to Jesus, it's more blessed to give than to receive, and uh, that's a good attitude, I think, for us to have when it comes to our possessions, when it comes to our wealth, whatever we have. I read a lovely story this week. Uh, well, actually, no, it was a couple of weeks ago, but it was a. a um, a billionaire called Chuck Feeney, and uh, he was um, uh, yeah. There, there was an article written about him um, in the in the newspaper in the, in the Guardian a couple of weeks ago. Chuck Feeney has achieved his lifetime ambition: giving away his eight billion dollar, that six billion pounds fortune, while he is still around to see the impact it has made. For the past thirty-eight years, Feeney. An Irish American who made billions from duty-free shopping empire has been making endowments to charities and universities across the world with the goal of striving to zero to give it all away. This week, Feeney, 89, achieved his goal. The Atlantic Philanthropist, the foundation he set up in secret in 1982 and transferred almost all of his wealth to, has finally run out of money. As he signed papers to formally dissolve the foundation, Feeney, who is in poor health, said he was very satisfied with completing this on my watch. From his small rented apartment in San Francisco, he had a message for other members of the super rich who may have pledged to give away part of their fortunes, but only after they had died. So those wondering about giving while living, try it, you'll like it. And there's just a, there's just a little bit about how we live. It says Feeney has lived a remarkably frugal lifestyle, not owning a car or home, and only one pair of shoes, he was known for flying only in economy class, even when members of his family and colleagues would travel in business class on the same plane. And I just, I read that and I thought, wow, you know, how often do you see that? A billionaire who just wants to give it all away. And, uh, and yet he found a kind of life and, um, you know, it was good for him. And I just thought that's a, a wonderful encouragement, I think, isn't it? That, you know, so often, we just want to hang on to everything, but no, it's it's good, isn't it, to, to not have that desire, but to, to to want to give. So life is a gift from God, and it's it's just this is all the way through Ecclesiastes we've been seeing this that we need to think about life as a gift from God, and we need to to take the things that He gives in the way that He uh, the right way that He gives them. Just remember that God will give us what we need. Now seek first the kingdom of God. All these things will be added to you. And then, and then we can see life and we can see things in the right way. We can make the right priorities. So let's prioritise our relationships. Let's not seek to hold on to wealth and put our trust in, in those things, but rather uh, seek to, uh, to, to give to each other and to, to build up our relationships with each other. Let's, uh, let's take a moment to, to pray now. And... Um, I thought it would be good after the um, the APCM on Sunday when we were um, we were sort of giving thanks for uh, Hannah and Rachel for the last um, few years of their youth and children's work and also commissioning them for the next three years. I thought it might be good to pray for for Hannah and uh, and for Rachel and for all of the, the youth and children's work. Uh, and I think um, there's uh, uh, other things going on as well. Um, at, Let's just pray sort of generally for the situation at the moment and pray for those, those in need. So let's, uh, let's take a moment to pray. Heavenly Father, we do uh, thank you once again for uh, this book of Ecclesiastes, uh, which has so much to teach us. And we pray that you would help us to, to learn and to understand uh, what it means to uh, to be people who have your priorities about, about our lives and to really learn that lesson 
that you want us to learn, Lord. We pray that you would help us to be people who do seek first your kingdom and to trust you for the things that we need, to be generous, to be loving, and to make a priority of building relationships. We pray that you would help us to be people after your heart. We do give you thanks, uh, Heavenly Father, for the last few years, for Hannah and Rachel uh, particularly at the moment, for all of the, uh, the good work that they've been able to do. And we thank you that uh, that is able to continue. And we pray that you would uh, bless them as they go about their, uh, their ministry, serving you in our parish and in St Paul's as well, um, in these difficult times. And we thank you for the way that schools have been wanting Hannah to continue and we pray that the schools that she's working in would uh, continue to want to, um, her to be involved and would look for other ways of building that even when uh, she maybe can't do um, all the things that she wants to. And we do pray Lord that you would give them wisdom and, and creativity in continuing to, to teach the children and young people all about you and how we might best um, reach out to all of the, the children and young people in our parish who, uh, uh, who don't know you. And so we do thank you, Lord, and pray for your blessing upon, upon them as they continue to serve you. And we do pray, Lord, as we uh, think further afield, we pray for uh, the world at this time with these strange and difficult times that we are facing. And we do pray, Lord, that you would grant our leaders uh, wisdom and uh, discernment as they seek to, to lead us in, a, in the right ways. And we pray, Heavenly Father, uh, for um, just a real blessing upon them and that they would seek your wisdom and your guidance as we look to the future. And we pray, Lord, that this, um, this situation would soon be over and that we would be able to, to meet uh, normally and that uh, we would be able to sing and all of the other things. But in the meantime, Lord, we pray that you would help us to learn patience and to learn uh, to learn what you want us to learn from it. And we do pray as well for those who are sick at the moment or in particular need of our prayers. Uh, we do give you thanks for, uh, for Pauline's uh, safe operation last week and uh, pray that you would continue to, uh, to help her with uh, the eyes. And uh, we pray, Lord, that you would uh, be with uh, Brian uh, Hockley in the hospital uh, still. Please help him, Lord, to know your presence uh, close to him. We pray for John and Claire at uh, Disney, as Claire is not well uh, again at the moment. And ask that you would be near and provide all that they need. And uh, we do pray, Lord, for all those known to us who are uh, sick at the moment or, or struggling in these outbreaks. Let's take a moment of quiet to bring before the Lord any who need our prayers today. service sheets and uh, we will join in with the confession together in a moment. Brothers and sisters in Christ, as we gather at the Lord's table, we must recall the promises and warnings given to us in the scriptures. Let us therefore examine ourselves and repent of our sins. Let us give thanks to God for his redemption of the world through his Son, Jesus Christ, and as we remember Christ's death for us, and receive this pledge of his love, let us resolve to serve him in holiness and righteousness all the days of our life. You then, who truly and earnestly repent of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God, and walking from this day forward in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge and lament our many sins and the wickedness we have committed time after time by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty. We have provoked your righteous anger and your indignation against us. We earnestly repent. And are deeply sorry for these our wrongdoings, 
forgive us all that is past, and grant that from this time forward we may always serve and please you in the newness of life, to the honour and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with heartfelt repentance and true faith turn to him, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the words of comfort our Saviour Christ says to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Hear what St. Paul says. This saying is true and worthy of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear what St. John says. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy, at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God. And therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. We pray together. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crimes under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to keep the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in your tender mercy gave your only Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who may bear, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. He instituted, and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue, a perpetual memory of his precious death, until he comes again. Hear us, merciful Father, we humbly pray, and grant that we receiving these gifts in your creation, this bread and this wine, according to your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who, in the same light that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. 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 Just a, a little reminder again, I'll bring the, uh, the the bread round to you and drop it into your hands. Um, uh, if anyone would like any um, squirty sanitising, um, that's fine. I'll come and bring it round, and, um, and then I'll come and bring the, uh, the, the bread round to you in your seats.
Let's pray together as the Lord Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And let's pray together the prayer after communion. Lord and Heavenly Father, we offer you, through your dear Son, Jesus Christ, this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Grant that by his merits and death, and through faith in his blood, we and all your church may receive forgiveness of our sins and all other benefits of this passion. And here we offer and present to you, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and our bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice. Fill us all who share in this holy communion with your grace and heavenly blessing. Although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer you any sacrifice, yet we pray that we will accept this, the duty and service that we owe. Do not weigh our merits, but pardon our offences. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty God. Just as we uh, come to the uh, come to the end, there um, one or two uh, little notices. It's Harvest Sunday this coming Sunday, and uh, we will be accepting donations to the uh, Friday sort of community um, uh, not not cafe, but you know the food support scheme, the food share scheme. So um, if you'd like to bring any uh, things, and also I, uh, there was a notice in the news sheet. Uh, Betel, we're going to be, because we couldn't do it in May, we're going to be accepting uh, through the month of October donations for Betel. So it's toiletries, things which would be useful for, for people, um, and as Steph can tell you the kind of things. But there's a little sheet with all of the kind of things which are uh, useful for them to take. So do have a little look at that, um, and that's in the, the new sheet. I think there was some on that table there. Um, next week, uh, it will be. Uh, our first Wednesday, and although we can't do the first Wednesday in the way that we'd like to, with all of the songs of praise and everything, uh, we'll try and make it a nice service, and it will be morning prayer, not a, a communion service, and uh, it will just be a, you know, um, fairly, hopefully fairly uh, light and um, you know, just a, a harvest reflection um, for us to, to think about this time of year. And uh, good to, I think it's good to think about you know, the ways that God's been good to us, isn't it? And especially at this time, I think it's very easy to, to look at all of the things going on and thinking, oh, this, that, and the other, but you know, think about how God is good to us. I don't think we've got any birthdays today, uh, this week, and uh, not, not for people who are Wednesday worshipers people, unless there's anyone. No, I don't think so. Right, no, no. so in that case, then we'll have our final uh, song, which is When I Survey. Number 596, 596, when I survey the wondrous cross, a lovely traditional hymn focused on the cross, so we have our final hymn.
just like to, uh, to say um, something I forgot to mention, but um, a, a little idea I suggested to Mark is about forming a little choir and maybe having a service which we record, maybe from here or St John's, with some singing. And um, if you'd be interested in maybe forming part of a little choir to, to sing, um, then do let me know or, or let Mark know. And um, that would be, um, be great. Just maybe a little, little thing we can do at the moment. Um, so some closing words from Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, we will.